Welcome to episode 98 of Build Your House Yourself University by HiU. I'm your host and fellow student, Michelle Nelson, and together we'll learn the basics of home design and construction and demystify the building process so we can better understand our options and build quality dream homes with or without a general contractor. The refrigerator is one of the hardest working, most used appliances in a house. Back in the day, all we had were refrigerators with freezers on top, and the main choice we had to make was color. Remember Harvest Gold and Avocado? Today, we have so many choices in refrigerators that I thought I'd do a quick episode covering the pros and cons of each style of refrigerator to help us choose the best fridge for our new homes. We'll talk about top freezer refrigerators, bottom freezer models, French doors and side-by-side refrigerators, counter depth fridges, and full refrigerator columns. Plus, I'll tell you the rule of thumb for the amount of fridge space you need in cubic feet. Before we get to that, I want to thank Cassie B. I hope I'm saying that right. It's spelled C-A-S-S-E-V. Thank you for that sweet five-star rating and review. The review starts out by saying, thank you, thank you, thank you. Cassie B was just starting to look at the building process and felt alone. But this podcast has helped answer a ton of questions and helped put some thoughts together for him or her. Thank you so much for that feedback. That's exactly what I like to hear. I felt alone and overwhelmed too when I started my home building research. And that's exactly why I started this podcast. It's definitely helped me and I'm glad to hear it's helped you too. All right, let's get into our refrigerator overview. Starting with the most common type of fridge, top freezer models. This is the type of fridge that most of us grew up with. The freezer unit sits on top, taking up about a third of the entire unit. Top freezer refrigerators are budget-friendly options, starting at about $450, and they're also available in many finishes and brands. The only real downside of a top freezer model is that the freezer takes up valuable eye-level space, which matters because most people go into their freezer less often than they go into their refrigerator. And some people argue that top freezer fridges are not quite as pretty or interesting to look at as other refrigerator styles. Top freezer fridges are best for homeowners who love a bargain and don't care so much about style or trends. Next on our list, bottom freezer models. Bottom freezer units are fairly similar in style to top freezer units, except for the fact that the freezer is, as you know, on the bottom third of the unit. This means that that valuable eye level space is available for fresh, non-frozen foods. So you won't have to hunch over so much to get to your fruits and vegetables with a bottom freezer unit. But that does mean you will have to hunch over to get to your frozen foods. Some bottom freezer models now come with freezer drawers, which can make it easier to get to ice cream, frozen dinners, and other frozen foods. Bottom freezer units tend to be slightly larger than top freezer models. They're also more expensive. Bottom freezer refrigerators start around $1,000. Although I've never had a bottom freezer refrigerator, I've had a couple of friends with them, and they complain that things get lost or hidden in the back of the freezer. Maybe in the same way that celery and cucumbers get lost or hidden in the back of the vegetable bin in a regular top freezer unit. Items at the bottom of fridges are more vulnerable to being lost or going bad simply because they're harder to see. Bottom freezer units are good for the homeowner who wants a simpler fridge with easy access to fresh foods and people who don't really mind bending over every time they want ice cream. Side-by-side refrigerators. That's next on our list. Side-by-side units usually have a refrigerator compartment that extends from the top to the bottom of the unit on the right side and a freezer compartment that extends from top to bottom on the left side. Some models have equal sized fridge and freezer compartments, but most side-by-side models have a smaller freezer unit, allowing for more space for fresh food. Side-by-side units are widely available and have many fancy features that are not available in top freezer and bottom freezer models. Features like a door-in door section that lets you quickly grab beverages without opening the entire fridge. Other features include humidity sensors, door alarms, frost guard technology, and quick cool and quick freeze options that are nice to cool the unit down when you load up the fridge or freezer with leftovers 
or new groceries. Adjustable shelves are another feature that might be helpful. If you're constantly rearranging things in your fridge to make space for groceries or leftovers, take a look for models with movable shelves that slide in or fold up to make it a lot easier to make room for tall items. Side-by-side refrigerators don't need as much clearance space to open the doors, making them a great option for narrow kitchens. And an added bonus of double doors is that they're not quite as heavy as a single door, which is good for kids and the elderly. One downside to this narrow freezer space in a side-by-side model is that that narrow freezer space makes it challenging to freeze wide items like extra large frozen pizzas. Most side-by-side refrigerators start around $1,100, and they're best for homeowners who have limited clearance space to open refrigerator doors, but who want a fancy fridge with special features. Next, French door refrigerators. French door refrigerators are very popular with homeowners building and buying new homes. French door models have a drawer-style freezer compartment on the bottom and a refrigerator compartment on top. The refrigerator compartment opens with side-by-side French doors. With two fridge doors, you won't be letting out quite as much cold air when you're opening just one door at a time. And those narrow fridge doors won't swing as far into the kitchen as a full-width door, leaving more space in front to move about. The double French doors are some of the lightest and easiest to open. French door refrigerators have numerous special features including smart features. Smart fridges can play music, display the weather, show a calendar, and put together a shopping list based on what you're missing within your fridge. They also let you see what's inside your fridge with a camera that's connected to your smartphone. That sounds awesome, right? But here's a caveat. If the manufacturer of your smart fridge doesn't reliably keep up the software and security updates, it's possible that your smart fridge can become infected with a computer virus or that the smart features could stop working altogether. Most smart fridge manufacturers will probably make software updates available for several years, but they may not make the updates available for the life of the refrigerator. So your smart fridge might become an ordinary fridge over time. Most French door refrigerators start around $1,500 and go up to several thousand dollars you'll probably pay an extra $1,000 for a smart French door fridge. That expensive price tag of the French door models is the main drawback. French door fridges are best for homeowners who like having the latest, greatest appliances with the most advanced features. Next, separate refrigerator and freezer columns. You might see completely separate refrigerator and freezer units in some higher end homes. Buying two separate units will obviously be more expensive than buying a combination fridge-freezer model, but you will have significantly more refrigerator and freezer space with two different units, which is ideal for larger families or for folks who do a lot of entertaining or who need a lot of fridge space for meal preps, for example. Separate columns will also take up more space, so they're best for large kitchens. Homeowners who want a high-end look and lots of space for fresh and frozen foods They are the best consumers for completely separate fridge and freezer units. Okay, let's talk about how big of a refrigerator you need. It varies, but a general rule of thumb is that you'll want five cubic feet of refrigerator space per adult or teenager in your household. Add a little extra space for holidays and special circumstances. Full-size refrigerators range from 10 cubic feet for compact models and over 30 cubic feet for extra large models. So a family of four, say two parents and two teenagers, will probably need at least a 20 cubic foot refrigerator. A little bigger is a little better. But don't forget to account for growing kids and a growing family. The average refrigerator will last 13 years, according to thisoldhouse.com. So you'll want the fridge that you buy today to be large enough for your family in the future. Choose a refrigerator that fits your kitchen and your family needs, but don't go overboard and buy extra fridge space that you'll never need. You'll pay for a fridge that's too big in your loss of valuable counter space and with higher monthly utility bills. Now, how about counter depth refrigerators? Counter depth refrigerators are simply refrigerators that align perfectly with the edges of your countertops. 
only the refrigerator door sticks out a little. This gives your fridge the appearance of an expensive, custom-designed unit that's built directly into your kitchen cabinetry without anything actually being custom-built. Since they shave a few inches off the front of a fridge that's counter-depth, it'll be slightly less spacious than its normal-sized counterparts. They also tend to cost a little more. You'll have to decide whether or not paying a little more for a less spacious but more stylish refrigerator is worth it. One benefit you should keep in mind, other than looks, is that having a more shallow counter-depth fridge will allow you to see the back of the refrigerator more easily. So losing or forgetting leftovers, cheese, condiments, and other items in the back of the fridge is less likely. So there's that quick overview of the different types of refrigerators that are available. As always, I'll remind you to look for Energy Star models to save on your utility bills and to ask about scratch and dent, floor models, and discontinued models to save on the purchase price. If you've just stumbled upon this podcast and you find it helpful, you can easily subscribe for free so that new episodes will automatically be downloaded to you. That way, you don't have to try to remember the name of the show or when it comes out. Just search Buy High You, B-Y-H-Y-U, then hit the subscribe button. Well, that's all I have for you this week. Let's do it again next week. Join me for the next episode of Build Your House Yourself University. Buy High You. Please remember that the purpose of this podcast is simply to educate and inform. It's not a substitute for professional advice. The information that you hear is based only on the opinions, research, and experiences of my guests and myself. That information might be incomplete, it's subject to change, and it may not apply to your project. In addition, building codes and requirements vary from region to region, so always consult a professional about specific recommendations for your home.